Hello everyone, welcome to the Embedded Laboratory. In this video I will demonstrate the working of my small project based on the ESP32 microcontroller. In this project, I will show you how to control the devices and get sensor data using ESP32 and MQTT. As you can see on your screen, the ESP32 is connected to the DHT11 sensor to sense the temperature and humidity data and it is also connected to the TFT display which is used to display the temperature and humidity values. You can see on the display there are two LEDs, one is a normal red LED and another one is RGB LED. I didn't use the physical LEDs instead, I am simulating the LEDs using the LVGL graphics library. There is a switch widget which is used to control the single color LED state. I will use this block diagram to explain what is happening inside the system Why, as the first step the ESP32 will connect to the Wi-Fi router and after the connection is successful, it will connect with the MQTT broker, once the connection is successful, it will start publishing the sensor data to broker. On the other hand, application developed using Qt Framework will subscribe to this data and display this on its application. Similarly we can control the LEDs from the application using a normal switch and also using the sliders, with sliders we can generate a color, and the same color will be displayed on the ESP32 TFT screen. If application is developed intentionally using Qt Framework so that it can run on all major operating systems like Windows, Android, Linux and others without any modifications. Now, let's watch the demo. As you can see on your screen ESP32 is trying to connect with the Wi-Fi router and after a successful connection, it will connect with the MQTT broker and then it will load the final dashboard screen. Now I will start the application for Windows to demonstrate its working. Clicking on the connect button will connect the application to the MQTT broker and clicking on the disconnect button will disconnect it from the MQTT broker. Moving the switch button position to the on position in the application will turn on the LED on the ESP32 display and moving the switch button position to the off position will turn it off. The switch button in the application is synchronized with the switch button on the TFT display. As you can see if I change the state of the switch button on the TFT display, the state is also updated in the application. Now coming to the sliders, there are three sliders to control the red, green, and blue colors of the LED as I change the slider. The colors are changed and the same colors are displayed on the TFT screen, this feature can be used to control the red, green and blue components of the RGB LED bulbs. Moving the sliders to the 0, 0, 0 position means that the RGB LED is off, which is represented as black color. Similarly setting the value 255 will represent the full white color. Sometimes you might feel that the color generated on the application does not exactly match the color on display, but this is due to the camera recording. With naked eyes this looks exactly similar. Till now we have seen the Windows application, now I will show you the same demo using the Android application. The Qt is cross-platform, hence the same application will run on the Android platform without any changes. On the Qt Creator Integrated Development Environment, I will just switch and select the Android project, and then build and run the project in Android emulator. I just wanted to highlight one important point here, the MQTT library is not available directly with Qt installation, and to make it work, you need to build and install the MQTT library externally, by using its source code. I have already shared the steps in my previous videos for both Windows and Linux operating systems, the links are given in the description of this video. Now, as you can see, the Android application is also working in the same way as the Windows application was working. This is the beauty of the Qt framework. Before proceeding further, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. With more than a decade in the field of PCB prototype and fabrication, they are committed to meeting the needs of their customers from different different industries in terms of the quality 
delivery, cost effectiveness, and any other demanding requests. They are one of the most experienced PCB manufacturers in the world. I hope my video's viewers will visit their website at least once to show their offerings. Now coming to the coding section, the ESP32 software is developed using the ESPIDF framework, while the Windows application and the Android application are developed using the Qt framework, which is a mixture of C++ and QML programming language. The project is not too small to explain each and everything in a short video, but if you follow my previous blogs and videos then it is basically a continuation or let's say the upgraded version of my previous projects. The source code is very well documented with the function headers and all the important points, calculations, and tricks are very well mentioned using the comments. The complete source code can be downloaded from the links given in the description of this video. In case you have any doubts please use the comment section of this video to ask any questions related to this topic. Thanks for watching this video if you like this video press the like button and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel.